o ila ua iwa fa chasi mele ni vaha ngo lea wauti. Se a fa pele o da avea ma sui tau va. O le tau vanga ua fa ngo ina lea o le Celebrity Island. So we've got some celebrities coming up uh, your way this afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, this is a voting competition, so... Uh, yeah, I think they didn't campaign that hard for, to, to remain on the competition. So we'll find out from them. Uh, good afternoon to former Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Carmel Sepuloni. Welcome to the program. My Lord, so good to have you on the program uh, today, uh, Carmel. And we also have uh, another celebrity with us today. Uh, big Tal of Lava going out to our good friend, uh, Gabby Solomon, Talo for Malu Soifua, Gabby. Oh, Malu Soifua. <laughs> Welcome to the program uh, this afternoon. Now, we'll start off uh, with you, uh, Carmel. Uh, can you tell us a bit about how you guys uh, got on to, to the competition? Well, I think we all had different ways of, of coming on to the program. There was actually another politician in the Labour Party that was asked to do it, and I won't name that particular politician, but he thought that I would be better suited and so was very supportive of me taking up the opportunity. I then had to get permission, um, but I was excited because it's one of our family's favourite programmes that we've watched for many years. Wow. And how did you how did you feel about, you know, uh, getting uh, getting ready to be on television? Well, I didn't do much to get ready. I think I only realised I was going on about six weeks before. I did um, <laughs> I did try and go to some kind of CrossFit class twice, and then I never went back. But I probably should have, because then maybe I would have been a little fitter and ready for the programme. <laughs> That's right. And just before that, uh, Carmel, you had an injury. Can you tell us about what happened to your leg? Yeah, so I snapped my Achilles whilst we were on the on the program and wasn't aware of the fact that it was fully ruptured until I got off the program. So I was still walking around, limping around uh, for quite a while before I left. And then when I got home, I was going to come to work in Wellington, but my husband did, made me go to A&E and that's when I found out that it was actually fully ruptured. Wow. How did it feel for you to be on, uh, on this competition compared to being in politics? It's... Um, well, it's a different type of challenge in some ways. The physical challenge, the being in the outdoors, the sleeping rough because those were not comfortable beds, uh, the uh, minimal amount that you can eat. Myself and Spanky Jackson were calling it fat camp, trying to stay positive that we were going <laughs> to lose weight. Um, but then in some ways it's very much like politics. It's you know, very political in terms of the conversations that you're having and the relationships that you have to form. Uh, and the decisions that have to be made. Well, good on you for, for taking up the challenge and taking it on the chin, uh, Carmel. Uh, Gabby, what was it like for you to be on the on the competition? Uh, it was a huge honour um, because they don't tell you any information prior to going on or filming. And so I remember when I turned up to the hotel where we were all getting picked up, and then I remember seeing Carmel outside and I was like, oh, maybe she's here for a conference or something. And then when I walked in and I realized Carmel was part of the cast, I was like, whoa. And then I see like Duncan Garner. Then I see James Rolleston, why don't you corporate? And I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> so it was, it was really cool, you know, being, seeing people who we see every day on TV and, you know, we know them in their roles and stuff to be amongst them. Like I felt really honored. Mm. Can you tell us a bit, uh, a little bit about your background, uh, Gabby, please? Yeah, so uh, currently I am a radio host on uh, the New FM breakfast show called The Morning Check. Um, I also do acting. I'm an alumni of the Pacific Institute of Performing Arts. And so, yeah, if I'm not on radio, I'm acting or auditioning. Um, so I do theatre, TV, film, all of that in the uh, TV and film industry here in New Zealand. And yeah, that's pretty much um, my life at the moment and what I'm juggling. So yeah, is acting hard compared to you being on the uh, on on the competition? No, acting was easier. Is is easier? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> because being in the competition is real life. <laughs> so you know, not only did everyone see my real hair and my real 
you know, muckers and everything, they you got to see the real us. <laughs> That's right. Now, there was a moment that you guys became really famous on the uh, competition or Celebrity Island where you guys were sitting on your backsides and you had to hold up a box. Carmel. What was going through your mind uh, when the minutes were were counting down and what was going through your mind at that time? Well, I think even before that, the, the cameras really didn't pick up how connected Gabby and I had got. I mean, we'd have our little sneaky conversations down the river, river when we'd bath before the cameras would show up. Um, and so we'd been talking a lot and there was a lot of trust there. I would not have chosen anyone except for Gabby to do that um, challenge with me because it was reliant on having someone that you knew would be absolutely loyal uh, and had a sense of obligation to you. And so that's why I chose Gabby. I think in the first 30 minutes, and Gabby might have a different view, but I felt like I was trying to hold us together and then keep us going. And then it was really interesting. I think there was like a period of silence between us. And then I started to really get a little bit weakened. And um, that's when there was the switch and you have the younger Samoan woman who kind of picks up the determination and strength and is the one who then is encouraging me. So it was it was a really beautiful moment, but it was the strength between us two um, that allowed us to continue on despite the pain and discomfort that we were feeling. And I think really emblematic of what it means to be Pacifica woman and to be unified. Now, Gabby, how familiar are you with the song Fale Halili? I'm not that much. Only I've only heard my nana sing it. Yep. Like growing up. And I've obviously heard the song growing up, but um, no, my family's not from the district of Fale Halili. And so it was real quite ran, not random, but not random that that was the song that came to me. Mm. But it is a song that my nana has often sang. And so yeah, that's why you will see, you know, and a lot of our Falea Lili uh, people have commented on the post that I, I don't know the words, you know, I've got the hem, I've got the, uh, sorry, the harmony, but I haven't got the words right, which is, you know, so accurate because, you know, I mean, if everyone knows that song. I just didn't know the words, but yeah, that was the song that came to me and it's been really beautiful learning about um, the district of Falea Lili over the over the weeks, I've loved I've loved being educated about like what that song means, and I learning what the song means in terms of like it's a song used for strength and for victory, and all of that. Like I was like, wow, how fitting that uh, that was the the piece that came to me in that time to help us in that challenge. Did you ever think at the time that people will be commenting and saying, Gabby, you got it wrong, you got this and that. Did that affect you in any way at all afterwards? I, well, people that know me, I, I, they know that I'm, who are familiar with me, they know that I'm used, they're used to me singing. Singing, I can't sing. I'm probably one of the few sound ones that cannot sing. So they're used to me singing, they're used to me being loud, used to me singing my own words. I don't think anyone expected me to have sung in that moment. That was mm. such a, you know, usually I'm singing from my mouth, which is like just noise. And this song came from my heart in that moment. So, yeah, it was it, it was very different this time around. Even with the group singing when we weren't on camera, uh, Gabby yeah. was with the Balangi songs. Gabby was singing the wrong words all the time. So. <laughs> So very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, good on you guys for putting yourselves out there. Just before we wrap up, uh, Carmel, what's your take on uh, what's happening in Samoa with the effect of the uh, Navy vessel from New Zealand? And is the government, is the New Zealand government doing enough for the environment and for the people of Samoa at the moment? We simply just do not know. They have not been very transparent and are not sharing much information with the general public or with us as opposition MPs. We are really concerned because at times there's been contradictory reports. The Samoan community on the ground, the locals, are saying something different from what we're hearing from the New Zealand politicians. And um, we're watching it very closely. My colleague, who's our spokesperson for Defence, Penny Hinari, uh, asked a lot of important questions of the government yesterday. We understand that there's an inquiry, but they should still be free-flowing with the information that they can give, and we just are not confident that that's been the case. So, you know, primarily we're concerned about Samoa, 
uh, particularly the villages that are affected, um, and of course for our environment. Um, but we have a job of holding the government to account, so we will keep doing that as opposition members of parliament. Thank you very much for that, uh, Carmel. Over to you, Gabby. What lessons did you learn from the competition and where to now for you and the uh, the organization that you represented th uh, throughout the competition? Oh, I spoke about this on my Instagram the other day. The biggest lesson that I learned um, my experience on Celebrity Treasure Island was I was so lucky to be in the same team as Carmel. And I'm, and I'm not just saying this, Carmel and Wairangi Kopu, because they really showed me how to navigate those spaces, those sorts of situations as a bus speaker person and with integrity. Because I've watched the game in the, you know, in the last few years. I've seen how it's played. I know how it's played. To have watched them and the way that they played the game, the way that they went about things, which has never been done before on the show, like it was a real uh, reality check and a real wake-up call to me Say so for me, it was like, oh, I can navigate in these spaces, not just the game, the outside and the industry that I'm in, in my everyday life as a Samoan woman. And the values that my family have taught me, I don't have to leave that at the door. I can apply that to my everyday life. So that's the biggest takeaway for me. Um, I was very honored to represent Dami Basfika, who is a, quite a new charity um, set up to support Basfika people with cancer. And so to be able to have won some money for them to bring so much more awareness um, to that charity, you know, I think we all know someone who has been affected by cancer, you know, whether that's in our close family, a friend, everyone knows someone. And so to be able to have been on a major platform like CTI and bring so much awareness to it, let our people know that there is support out here um, for people with cancer and that there is help and that we're not in, the, in that journey alone. Um, it was yeah, it was just a real privilege to be able to do that. Mm. And finally, uh, Carmel, what's your uh, what was your take out from the competition, and what's your advice for those uh, Pacific people, or especially our Samoan people, who would like to be uh, part of this competition if they ever get the chance to be on <laughs> Celebrity Island in the near future? Ah, oh, well, I mean, I think for me, it really is similar to Gabby in that. It was a lesson on how we can be ourselves and live our values in any kind of space. Even if it is a show like this, where in the past we would have seen really sneaky um, types of dramatic behaviour and whatnot, and we didn't want to operate like that. But also it was the, the generational lesson that I got out of just that challenge with Gabby and the conversations and the time that we had um, on the show. You know, I may and Wairangi, um, maybe a little bit older, maybe been a little around a little bit longer. Um, but there's this wonderful generation coming through. Um, Gabby, my favourite, of course, but others like Baba and JP and uh, James, uh, who are that next generation of leaders uh, who we can rely on. And I think the challenge was really um, symbolic of that, um, who are strong, who are talented, who are amazing. And it just gave me quite a sense of peace, um, recognising that on the show, that this is the new generation that's coming through and we can be proud of that generation. Mm. Will we be seeing uh, Carmel with uh, Dancing with the Stars anytime soon? Never. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, there was one time on the show where Spanky Jackson was taking everyone through a dance routine and they were all twerking and everything else. And I want to just say, that I retained my dignity and would not participate in those types of moves and actions. Gabby did, but she's young. She's allowed to. <laughs> All right. It's, it's been a pleasure having you, uh, uh, former Deputy Prime Minister Carmel Cipolloni, on the program this afternoon. And finally, over to you, uh, Gabby. What's the final word for people who are wanting to be in the next Celebrity uh, Island uh, competition? Oh, I think to any of our other Bosfika people who get the opportunity to go on uh, Celebrity Treasure Island, um, go and be yourself. We don't, you don't have to leave your bosfika at the door. What you learn at home, you don't have to leave it off the island. You can take it with you. Um, and it's just the I've loved so many families who have you know messaged me or come and spoken to me about this is the one hour in the day where all our families get to 
sit down together and watch TV together. And so, you know, just remember that when you go on there is that they get to see themselves in us, they get to hear, you know, how we talk and all of that. So be proud and uh, represent well. Thank you very much for that, uh, ladies. Uh, Gabby Solomona from uh, New FM, as well as Honorable Carmel Sepuloni. Thank you very much for being on Radio Samo today. And uh, thank you for sharing your uh, experience with us here on Radio Samo. All the best. And uh, one thing from me, make sure that you learn your Samoan and keep on learning your Samoan so we can speak in Samoan in the near future. Have a lovely afternoon and we'll catch you guys Bye. later. Pacific Media Network. We have Paul and you family. We have a lot of people who are in the land. We have a lot of people who are in the land. We have a lot of celebrity island. We have a lot of people who are in the Christian Cullen. We have a lot of people who are in the land. We have a lot of people who are in the land. We have a lot of people who are in the land. Tetas, <laughs> 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 <laughs>